So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to my last session. We're a culture, not a costume. My race is not, not a costume. My name is Dr. Chappelle. I am the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Coordinator here at the Henderson Community College. And so my speaker is here. And so speaker, can you please say your name? My name is Bernice Arroyo. Okay, Bernice, can you tell me your race? Yes, uh, my race is Mexican American. All right, can you please turn your camera on? Um, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse my messy hair and everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, Bernice. How are you doing? Good. How are you guys? OK, um, I am in the process trying to pin your uh, video so everybody can see you. OK. All right. All right. So do you get offended when someone when you see someone dresses your race during Halloween? Um, I would say it depends on what the costume is. Um, now, if you you know it's obvious when somebody's trying to make fun of or joke around but if it's something that just for example like how we celebrate the day of the dead and they dress up where they uh face uh they paint their face as like as like a skeleton or something like that then that doesn't really offend me but uh if it's something that is uh offensive then uh normally i would just try to educate the person like hey uh this is what uh for example like some people don't know that certain things mean things like tattoos or uh like for example a feather they symbolize something and uh, things like that if that makes sense okay all right what is other people's perception of you when they see you uh just me as a person Yes, yes. When they see you on the street or what, what is their perception when they see you? Um, I honestly don't even know. I've never really. Uh, I would say that they think I'm outgoing, uh, open minded. Um, or do you mean just like as. Like, do they think you're another race? Do they think you. Oh, think that's a, uh, yeah. well, actually, what I think is funny is. When I tell people like, oh yeah, I'm Mexican, and they're like, you're Mexican? I'm like, yeah, is it not obvious? I mean, my tan skin or like, you know, my hair and stuff. And they're like, no, I would have never thought. Like, I don't know if they're just saying that, but I, I think it's funny. Because <laughs> I feel like it's obvious, but yeah. Okay. Um, what do you think about today's racial tension? Has it changed your opinion and view about other races? Um. Uh, can you explain the question more? Like, uh, with everything going on, like the Brianna case and the George Floyd case, um, with all the racial tension that's going on in today's society, has that changed you, your view of other races, white, black, Hispanic, um, any other races? Has that changed your view of how you view them or judge them? Uh, no, not necessarily, because I tend to judge people by the person, not necessarily by the race, but I do uh, feel like race racism is still alive for sure. OK, um, as a student, do you feel like ACC provides a safe environment for you to continue your, your education? Now, I know you're a nursing student and you've been in the I am mentor program. Have you had any um, any problems or feel like that with all the racial tension that it's not a safe environment for you to continue? Education? Have you experienced anything? Uh, I have not actually. I've had a great experience through HCC, and I'm yet to experience anything uh, racial related. Okay. Um, do you think ACC is a diverse with their students, faculty, and staff? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. And then, sure, something that you would like to change in today's society. Um. I wish I wish I could, but I can't. Uh, I wish people would be more open minded and uh, accept others opinions and not judge somebody because their opinion is different than their own. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess that's pretty much it. 
give me an example or something you will like. You you said that um, you would like to change some things, but give me an example. Um. No. Okay. It's kind of hard because I feel like I really don't have control of a lot of things. <laughs> well, like what? I mean, just be honest. I mean, this is an open forum to to voice your opinion and to give us as ideal as you know ACC. There's faculty and there's staff on here, so. Oh, do you mean the, like with the school? What would I want to say? Oh, okay. School, and also okay. in today's society as well, if you had a choice. So let's talk about school. What is one of the things you would like to see happen here at ACC? Uh, well, uh, I can't really, with the school, I don't really have anything that I would like to change, honestly, because normally it's just, I'm focused just on going to school and coming home, nothing really else mm -hmm. on there. But, um, I honestly don't really have anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so anything in Henderson, in the Henderson community you would like to see or may aware of? I mean, do you feel like this open forum that we have and that more people need to be here to hear what you have to say? Also out in the community, do you feel like that? Oh, I do like, uh, I think that more cultural things should be going on. For example, I don't know if you guys know, last year they tried to do like a Day of the Dead event uh, mm -hmm. in the park. And I saw a lot of um, stuff on like social media where people were trying to say that um, that they shouldn't be allowed to do that because it was that it was some type of spirit thing that we were trying to bring uh, bad spirits and stuff. And I just feel like people should be educated more on that because that is totally opposite of what we do on that uh, holiday. So well, maybe can you educate us on that holiday so we can know that uh, more about it and we can support <laughs> it. Uh, well. It's mostly just where people kind of uh, uh, try to memorize their dead family members and just, uh, uh, it's more of a celebration more than, uh, it's kind of, yeah, I, I honestly, I'm horrible at explaining things. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're doing fine. So what you're saying is more of a celebration of your past ancestors. So yeah. a lot of people try to tie that into Halloween, and which I've known my research is that it is two different things right. because you're celebrating your past ancestors and Halloween is a totally different. So have you had tried to explain that to somebody that there's two different, um, you guys don't consider it a holiday. It's just more of, you guys of uh, celebrating your ancestors and as I'm correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Right. No, yeah, you're right. Uh, yes, it, it is. I have, I haven't really uh, had to educate anybody about it because I've never really talked to anybody about it outside of my race that knows about it. But yes, I agree uh, with what you're saying. It, it, that's it. Now, when you see people dress up that for Halloween and you said that that does offend you, how, what is your reaction? Do you get mad? Do you try to explain to them it's not okay? Or you just like, uh, you just blow it off? Oh, oh, well, it doesn't really offend me, uh, when they do dress up as that, as long, uh, unless they're trying to make fun of it or anything mm -hmm. like that. But normally I feel like I've never really seen anybody do it in an offensive way, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. So I know the movie Coco came out um, a couple years ago, and I actually watched it myself. And so that helped me understand. I know it's a cartoon movie, but it helped me understand the culture and what that was behind. So did you have you seen it? Yes, I love that movie. It was really it, good. So yes. did that uh, you feel like that will help explain the um, how I say it behind your culture of that um, celebration that dead of dead okay yeah children you know i mean they might not really see that side of it they look at it more as a cartoon but mm -hmm. I, I really like, enjoyed that movie that was a good movie mm -hmm. any other things that we might want to research more about your culture now you said you was hispanic yeah, Mexican, yeah, Mexican American. Mexican, I'm sorry. See, I messed You're up. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, has anybody called you Latino or Latina or is there ain't there a diff difference between that as well? 
Right, which uh, I've heard that there is, but I normally don't get offensive if somebody were to call me Latina or Latino just because uh, I feel like it's more of a general uh, name of like all the, like the Spanish speaking community and instead of just automatically saying, oh, Puerto Rican or you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's yeah. more of like a general uh name for it I guess now do you speak Hispanic uh do you speak (laughs) look I'm getting tongue-tied do you speak uh uh Spanish is that your um second language or your first language yes that is my first language I with my parents I speak only Spanish with them and then outside of home I speak English yeah okay so when did you learn to speak English I actually learned English when I started school, like preschool. I remember um, I would have this teacher come in like once a day or once a week to test, I guess, my English. And Mm -hmm. then eventually she, I just stopped seeing her and just throughout the years. Okay. All right. Well, um, that's all the questions I have right now for you, but I'm going to open this up to the other people that's in the room. So if you guys want to ask Bernice a question, raise your hand and I will acknowledge you. Sarah, go ahead. Hi, Bernice. Hi. I don't have a question for you, but I uh, actually participated and went last year to the Dia de los Moratos. Oh, really? Uh, event, and it was beautiful. And I was so sad that just with COVID, they won't be doing that again. But I, I can't wait to go again and be immersed in that beautiful culture. That was so great. Did you get to go last year, Bernice? I did not get to go. I believe I worked that day, but my church is the one that organized it. I don't know if you know Abraham Brown. Yes. 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 Yeah, he's like the director of our church, and he's he's helped us a lot throughout trying to figure out ways to involve our culture more in the community. Well, that was a great event, and I look forward to hopefully that returning next year. Well, thank you so much for going. <laughs> You're welcome. And Dr. Chappelle is right. That Coco Ant movie is fabulous as well. <laughs> thank you, Sarah. Anybody else? All right, Sarah, you got your hand up again. I'm sorry. It actually is a question this time. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, Bernice, I know you said that you speak um, Spanish uh, with your family. When you think, um, like when you're taking a nursing exam, do you think in Spanish or do you think in English? I actually get this question all the time. And to be honest, I feel like I think more in English than I do in Spanish. I don't know if it's because, like, my boyfriend is... uh, why is that the proper term (laughs) okay so um and i live with him so we speak uh english most of the time so i feel like it's starting which i still am trying or i make sure to keep my spanish with me all the time but it's wonderful yeah but i feel like um english is probably what i think about (laughs) okay Okay. thanks bernice you're welcome Thank you, Sarah. Now I have a question. Is that so? Do you you just know you said something about keeping your Spanish all the time? Do you feel like it sometimes that you think you're losing your Spanish and you have to start talking it, or because you with your family it keeps you keep your Spanish more fluent? Right. Uh, yeah. I feel like with uh, with my parents, I always we always speak Spanish. I feel like that's helping me keep it. But yeah, sometimes like if I'm trying to talk to somebody, like let's say I'm trying to talk English with somebody, I I accidentally say like a Spanish word and I'm like, oh, never mind. I didn't mean to say that. You don't even know what that means. Or like vice versa, you know. (laughs) But uh, yeah, sometimes I do mess up my words or like I have to sit here and think, well, how do you say that in English? Did you get you to convert everything? Get you to convert everything when they see something in Spanish once you convert it in English? Oh, yes, all the time. They always want to know the bad words. That's like the number one. <laughs> <laughs> they always want to know those, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dr. Madley, go ahead. Hi, Bernice. You were talking about your parents and speaking Spanish with them. Um, do they speak English 
Uh, they do understand it, and they can speak some words, but it, their accent is so thick that people usually have trouble understanding them. But, like, I've asked my mom and my dad, they're like, my mom's like, well, I, I, most of the time I do understand what the person is saying, but sometimes I can't get my words to respond to them, or they can't really understand me because my accent's so thick and stuff like that. Yeah. When you were younger, like, maybe, you know, I don't know if you went places with your parents, and did you... Um, you know, how did that go? Did you feel um, that they were accepted wherever you went uh, with the language difference? Or did you see anything that you would like to see changed um, to be more uh, open and uh, um, collaborative? Uh, yeah, I feel like uh, like me and my family, I've never had issues or encounter problem like that. But I have heard stories where people have spoken Spanish in public and they're like speak English, you know, this is America, et cetera, stuff like that, which I feel like it's kind of sad because I just feel like, I mean, it is a free country. You are, uh, it's a country of freedom. And I mean, and in schools, they teach you other languages, which I understand it's hard for it to stick and stuff. But what if other people learn those languages and actually wanted to speak that in public? Would they say the same thing if they were a different race? If that makes sense. But yeah, that is uh, something that I've heard people have encountered, but I personally have never had a problem. Thank you, Dr. Magley. Anybody else has a question or Dr. Magley, you still have your hand up. You got another question? <laughs> no, I just had to lower it. Anybody else have any questions for, for Ronice? Mike, go ahead. Uh, I was just curious if you've uh, had an opportunity to travel much, and if so, um, uh, did you find certain parts of the country uh, more accepting and more, more inclusive than where we're at here in Henderson? And if so, would you have any suggestions for Henderson as a whole to, to improve upon? That is a good question, and I do not travel much, but uh, I'm sure as you're aware, like more of the southern states, uh, there is a higher population of like the Hispanic community due to the border being right there, but uh, I haven't really had, this, I've traveled only like a couple hours from here or like here and there. Uh, the only one time I traveled really far was to Seattle, and uh I didn't really get to go out as much because uh, we were there for a business trip for doing my boyfriend's work, but uh, I couldn't really compare uh, the acceptance versus here, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I make good coffee in Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Go ahead, April. Hi, Bernice. Hi. Uh, I just want to ask a question with you saying that uh, you have spoke about your boyfriend. And so being out in public with your boyfriend, do you get stares or, you know, looks or like I would if I went out with a Caucasian guy and I'm black, get those looks. Do you get the same? I honestly feel like we've had before. Um, get some looks because I know some people don't believe in like mixing races and stuff like that but normally we honestly just ignore it because um, we never actually been said anything or you know like been approached or anything but we you can obviously sense it or see it etc but uh, we normally just keep on going okay yes thank you April now, I, unless I missed this, now where is your family, where did they originated from and how did they migrate to Henderson? Um, both of my parents are from Mexico. Uh, they're, my dad's from a, a state called Zacatecas and my mom's from a state called Jalisco. And they're like border, kind of like uh, Evansville and Henderson, like that. Um, so I know my mom told me that my father came over here first and back then it was a lot easier than it is now. But, um, and then my mom was pregnant over there with me. And then she, uh, my dad wanted me to be born in the US. Uh, okay, 
Sorry, I'm getting emotional. Oh, doll, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's okay. Take a minute. Okay, because he wanted me to be born in the U.S. because obviously, as you guys know, there's a lot of poverty and stuff like that, violence. So, um, I don't know if you guys know how the process is. Obviously, if you're not legal, you can't just cross the border. So, normally what people do is they hire what's called a coyote. And they're, like, training people to know, like, where to walk through and just to take people through the border. So, they walk through the desert for, like, days and they, they do swim across a river and they jump a fence. Like literally how they say it is. So as I, as I, as I mentioned before, um, my mom was like eight months pregnant with me. So my mom did all that to bring me to the U.S. And uh, we, at first, they went to... Uh, I don't know if anybody of you know where South Bend, Indiana is. So, because my dad had like other family members there. So then we got there and I was actually born there like about a month later. And then uh, we migrated to Henderson after that oh, for more jobs opportunity, which is crazy for me. Like how you come from Mexico and end up in a small Henderson, Kentucky place. <laughs> But uh, I was curious. I like when I meet people and I find out they're from another country. I'm like, well, how'd you migrate to Henderson in the middle right. of like nowhere, cornfields and yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So first we did uh, live in Indiana, and then when I was about three, we moved to Henderson because uh, of job seeking. But yeah, Kentucky, <laughs> so yeah. the oh, Indiana and the blue the was well, Indianapolis. You come to the bluegrass, Henderson, Kentucky. So. Right. Um, I know, uh, thank you for sharing. I know this is a very sensitive uh, matter as well, just to talk about. Um, so you are a U.S. citizen. Has your parents, this is not, has your parents applied for to be a citizenship or anything like that? Uh, both of my parents are what's called a, a permanent resident, where they're allowed to live and work in the U.S. And then they can apply for their U.S. citizenship which my dad is stubborn. He doesn't want to. I guess he plans on going back sometime soon. But my mom is wanting to apply for citizenship, yeah. Because obviously you have more, uh, uh, what's the term I'm looking for? More uh, rights or something yeah, like that. Yeah, more rights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I couldn't think of it. <laughs> That's okay. And then um, also, are you the only child? I am not. Um, I have a, a little sister, and then uh, my dad has an older daughter with another uh, woman, but that is it. We're not your typical 20,000 kids. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that is one of the stereotypes, is too, is like oh, Mexicans, yeah. they have, like you said, a whole bunch of kids. So, you know, I'm glad you shared that with us as well. It's like, no, you're not one that in a family that has multiple. So, um, Family during holidays. What holidays do y'all celebrate? Do you celebrate the same holidays we do? Or I know you said uh, the date of dead is it's kind of a holiday. Can we say it's a holiday for you? Or uh, yeah, I would say it's a holiday. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, we celebrate that. We pretty much celebrate all the days you guys do, which is uh, except for on Christmas. We celebrate on Christmas Eve, and you guys celebrate on Christmas Day. Uh, which works great for family, you know. Uh, and then Mother's Day, uh, you guys celebrate every second Sunday, right, of May. And we always celebrate it on the 10th, no matter what day it is. So I think that's uh, uh, pretty much it, the different wise. 
I celebrate Christmas on Christmas Eve, so I just thought I'd let you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I live Christmas Day well, just to float do. around not well, doing anything. Yeah. Um, anybody else have any questions for Bernice? Uh, I don't have any questions. I just have a comment. Yeah, um, go ahead, Elena. I have had Bernice as a student, worked with her from other classes, and I never get tired of hearing your story, Bernice. Uh, it's very touching. And uh, we're grateful that you are here and you're going to be a great nurse. Thank you so much. I did not know all my nursing instructors were going to be here either. <laughs> Bernice, this is Dr. Donahue, and I completely agree with Ms. Bowser. That is so true. I, I can't wait to see what you do as a nurse. You're going to be great. Thank you so much, guys. It means a lot to me. Well, I can brag because I met Bernice in my CIT 105 class, mm -hmm. and then she came part of the I Am Mentor program. And when she got accepted, look, I'm not trying to tear up because you know, okay. when you got accepted to the nursing program, I, I, I still have it to this day, the letter that you sent to me by you being accepted into the nursing program. So that meant a lot to me that you you sent that to me. So I agree with all your nursing instructors, even though we became, you know, close, you know, student relationship over the past year. But I feel like, you know, you're going to be a great nurse and you sharing your story um, today really means a lot. So I will be calling on you for other things to be mentor of other students. So I, I'm, I'm proud of you. Thank you. Bernice, this is Dr. Manley, and I would echo what everyone else has said about, you know, you're going to be a wonderful nurse. Um, you know, I had you in that little um, AHS 203 class that I teach, and you were, you know, really um, highly participative in there and really shared your viewpoints from your background. And it's really great to have those different perspectives and something that you're going to do in addition to being a great nurse from your skills is you're bringing diversity to nursing and that continues to be a challenge in the nursing profession. So, um, you know, you you're just going to make a difference. You're going to make a difference in helping to not just care, but to bring that level of acceptance and comfort uh, to patients who want to be cared for by someone who looks like them. And that's a contribution that's um, really uh, is immeasurable. Yes, I completely agree. The percentage of like Hispanic or people in general in the medical field is very small. Very small. But thank you so much for all of your kind words. It really does mean a lot. We still have some time. Did anybody else want to ask Bernice more questions? Bernice, I'm hoping you don't feel like you're on the hot seat. Oh, it's fine. I wish I would have prepared more for these questions. I feel like it was all butchered. <laughs> No, no, it's it's an open forum. You're just sharing, you know, like we talked before. And so anything you would like to share with us, I just gave you the question. It's kind of like the general idea of what we was going to be talking about. So I don't don't feel like you're not prepared to answer these questions. I like everything you're sharing. Um, anything you want us to know before we close out? Um. Oh, I just wanted to say that you all have been a amazing instructors, teachers, uh, friends, and uh, I really appreciate everybody. Well, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Last call for Bernice. <laughs> Bernice, this is Miss Crick. I, um, I, I think your other nursing instructors have said what I would say, but I can just attest to everything that they have said and Dr. Chappelle has said is true. Um, you're inspirational and you did not need to prepare today because your answers were authentic and that is what we appreciate about you is you being you and um, I'm very proud of you and I'm looking forward to having you again in your final semester of nursing school. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Bernice. I'm Dr. Renee Wagner, and I just wanted to thank you. This is my first opportunity to get to know you, but just to hear all these accolades and to hear your story, I was truly touched. And I was glad I didn't have my camera on earlier because I was doing the ugly cry when you were sharing some parts of your story. Um, 
but it just means so much and I appreciate you and all you've done and I'm so glad you chose him college so I wish you all the best and hopefully when you graduate we can at least have some kind of virtual um, celebration for you thank you I hope so I hope we can throw a big party <laughs> Well, I'm going to do the ugly cry. So um, <laughs> when I see you, so uh, we have a couple more people that um, hop on the line. We have Jessica and we have Stacy Howe um, as well. And so Lori has her hand up, Lori Donahue. And then I'm going to give a little snippet of what we talk about, and give the other people opportunities. So go ahead, Lori. Yes, I was just wondering, do you have any uh, one suggestion or more of ways that we could be more inclusive and, you know, recruit more people, um, you know, diverse populations and things like that. Do you have any suggestions for us? Um, I honestly can't think of anything. Um, I do put my word out and I tell people like, hey, there's an amazing nursing program at Henderson and stuff like that, which a lot of people just have trouble with, you know, financial and uh, problems to get into school, but I really can't think of anything right now, Miss Don. Who? Oh well, and if they're worried about the financial end, send them to us, and we can try to help them with that too. So thank you, uh, thank you for helping us recruit too. I appreciate it. Of <laughs> course, thank you. For the people who just joined in, Bernie's is just basically giving her synopsis of her race and and everything. So feel free um, to ask her any questions. She is Hispanic American. Did I get it right this time? Mexican American. Yeah. Mexican American. <laughs> I, I don't know why. See, there, there I go. Mexican American. Um, any questions anybody want to ask her before we um, wrap up? I don't have any questions because I feel like I'm jumping in on the latest part of this I, I, I'm <laughs> understanding but uh, and I'm sorry I chimed in late but thank you thank you for recognizing us and and um, let, giving us the opportunity to ask questions but I have none at this time thank you guys for joining in <laughs> Jessica I as well am sorry that I was late uh, to the event today. Um, I just hopped on and I can hear your passion for what you're going to do when you uh, get out of school and I'm a recruiter here so I was glad Lori asked the question about recruitment. Um, any ideas or thoughts that you have even when you graduate or things that we can do we'd love to hear feedback from graduates so you may not have any today but if you think of any please let us know and thank you for sharing with us. Will do, thank you. If any, if anything comes up, I'll for sure let you guys know. So Bernice, this is the last call for you. So anything, I know we keep asking questions of you, but anything you just remember you would like to share with us or anything before we wrap up? I don't think so. Well, thank you again for um, allowing us to hear your story. Um, it was wonderful. I really appreciated you being here to do this for us and everything. So if there's no other questions or anything you would like to share, I want to wrap up and, and wish you a good evening and everybody else. All right, thank you. All right, bye everyone. Thank you for attending. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hmm.